welcome back. Uh, we are in the second part of glycolysis journey and uh, we have to now discuss thoroughly about the steps involved in glycolysis. As already mentioned, the steps of glycolysis are divided into two. The first one is called as preparatory stage where we are investing two ATPs and it involves the first three steps of glycolysis. Second stage is payback stage wherein we generate four ATPs and we are actually paying back whatever we have utilized, that is the ATP. So let us talk in this particular video about the preparatory stage. The preparatory stage, as I already mentioned, involves first three reactions. And let me give you some pointers about how to write any pathways in enzyme. It's always preferable to write the pathway on one side like this. Okay, so you can write the pathways on one side like this and give the explanation on the other side. That would usually be a best way of writing. Here for the sake of convenience, I have uh, taken this particular slide from Leninger and it has got numbers and that number indicates the enzyme. But we prefer for the students to write the enzyme name here only on the left side. On the right hand side, you should show if there are any redox reactions happening, you should show if any ATP is being utilized uh, mandatorily. If there are any cofactors involved should also be mentioned. Here they haven't mentioned, so I have written it separately. Remember, all kinases will require either magnesium or manganese, mostly it is magnesium. So please do write these cofactors. So once you have done that, Next, we, we will talk about reversibility and irreversible reactions. When the direction of the arrow points downwards and it's a single, it, the reaction is irreversible. That means once glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate, there is no turning back using the same enzyme. So this reaction is not possible with the same enzyme. And when you're using ATP, you're showing that ATP is being utilized, you should properly show the change like this, if it is ATP to ADP. Since the one ATP is adenosine triphosphate and ADP is adenosine diphosphate, the one phosphate has already gone into the phosphorylation step. It is ATP just becoming ADP. If it was to propel the reaction forward, the ATP was undergoing hydrolysis. At times, they will write ADP plus inorganic phosphate like this. But in this case, we don't require it because it is not a, uh, it is a phosphorylation reaction. It is not any other different reactions. Okay. All right. Now that was about writing the pathway. Now, many questions have the doubt. Do we have to draw the structure? The structure, I mean this chemical structure. Now, ideally, we don't expect you to remember the structure and write it down. But it has always been found that when we read any pathways, uh, seeing the structure, it is more easily understandable. We understand the next subsequent reactions more quickly. Okay, so, but there is no mandatory rule. Even for postgraduates, it's not mandatory for them to write the structures. So for undergraduate, definitely it is not mandatory. This type of pathway is more enough. But if you have to fetch marks, five points have to be remembered completely. One, what is the substrate? What is the correct uh, product being formed? What are the reactions happening on the right side? What is the name of the enzyme and its cofactor? Are the arrows properly shown? Is the reversibility, reversibility properly mentioned? Then what exact major thing that is happening up, along with it, a write up for that reaction on one more side. That will suffice you uh, to get good number of marks if um, you are expecting some marks over there. All right, now, 
Another common mistake that students do is glucose is converted to glucose six phosphate. That is a very wrong habit. Please do change it. You have to mention what is happening. Glucose is phosphorylated by hexokinase to glucose six phosphate. That should how the wordings should be constructed. Okay, so that was all about how to write the pathway. So let us start it with writing, knowing the pathway. So glucose gets phosphorylated to glucose six phosphate by the enzyme hexokinase and which requires magnesium or manganese as cofactor. This is the first step. Let us know certain features about it. So you can see here, this is the first carbon, this is the fifth carbon, and this is the sixth carbon, CH2OH, right? At the sixth carbon, there is phosphorylation, and that phosphorylation will give you the first phosphorylated product, that is glucose 6-phosphate. The enzyme utilized is hexokinase, and there are basically four types of hexokinases, one, two, three, and four. The fourth hexokinase is also called as glucokinase. Now it is also called as glucokinase. There is a lot of difference between hexokinase and glucokinase. And it is one of the most favorite questions of examiners as well. Where do you see glucokinase? Where do you see hexokinase? So about hexokinase and glucokinase, we'll make a separate video and we will discuss about this. As mentioned earlier, all the kinases require either magnesium or manganese mandatorily. What is this step? What is the importance of this step? That has to be emphasized. This step is majorly meant to trap the glucose inside the cells. We don't want the glucose to move back into the circulation once it has entered through the transporter. So we need to trap it. And to do so, we have to phosphorylate it. So glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate to be trapped within the cell. Once it, glucose 6-phosphate is formed, it can have different fates. What are the fates? One, it can continue in glycolysis. Two, it can go in for HMP shunt pathway. Correct? And three, it, if there is a lot of glucose present in the body, it can become glycogen right? And four, it can enter into uronic acid pathway. So it all depends upon the utility of the cell, what pathway it requires at that moment, okay? So once it becomes glucose 6-phosphate, it is not mandatory that it will have to go into glycolytic pathway only, okay? And secondly, and most importantly, this reaction is irreversible, once glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate with the help of hexokinase, glucose 6-phosphate cannot reconvert back glucose using the same enzyme. It is an, a thermodynamically impossible reaction, hence it is irreversible. Now, what happens next? The next step, you have already formed glucose 6-phosphate, correct? So now it has to isomerize to fructose 6-phosphate. So you see that here it is half uh, two arrows written. That means it is very much reversible reaction. Okay. So what will happen now? Glucose 6-phosphate will isomerize to fructose 6-phosphate. All right. So what next? There is nothing much to write over here. The enzyme is phosphohexose isomerase. Most importantly, you have to remember the word isomerase, okay? Because glucose and fructose are functional isomers and the enzyme which brings about this one is isomerase. Since a phosphate group is involved, it is phosphohexose. Both glucose is also hexose and fructose is also hexose. So it is generally called as phosphohexose isomerase. Let's now talk about the third reaction that is fructose 6-phosphate undergoing second phosphorylation. If you remember, in the preparatory stage, we say two mom, uh, ATPs are involved in the preparatory stage or the investment stage of the glycolysis. So first one was in the hexokinase and second one is in the 
for in the form of for you know phosphorylation of fructose 6 phosphate now fructose gets phosphorylated at the first position so this is the structure of your fructose 6 phosphate wherein at the sixth position there is a phosphate group now at the first position also it will get phosphorylated okay so the enzyme which it does is pfk1 what is the name of the enzyme it is a short form of the enzyme but very common and very famous uh, abbreviation that is pfk1 when they have already mentioned pfk1 it is a hint that there is another enzyme by name pfk2 Again, we will make another video to talk about the importance of PFK1 and PFK2. Okay, so what is the function of uh, PFK1? First and the foremost, it is the rate limiting step. Most of the time, students get confused that hexokinase is a rate limiting step. No, hexokinase is not a rate limiting step. It is Phosphofructokinase 1, which is rate limiting step, and it is also a second irreversible step. So, what is the product that is formed? 1 at first position, there is phosphate group now at sixth position. So, it is fructose 1, 6 biphosphate or bisphosphate. Now, I will ask you all a question, answer it in the comment section. What is the difference between a biphosphate and a diphosphate? Even in a biphosphate, there are two phosphate groups. In diphosphate also, there are two phosphate groups. But we don't call this one as F16 diphosphate. We call it as F16 bisphosphate or biphosphate. Okay. Now, we said that PFK1 uh, is a rate-limiting step. So, this is your rate-limiting enzyme. So, it has got many allosteric modulators then which will control the speed of glycolysis, either increase glycolysis process or decrease the glycolysis process. This can be done by uh, acti uh, acting on the PFK enzyme. One of such products is fructose 2,6-biphosphate. What is it? Fructose 2, 6 biphosphate means that instead of one position, there is a product formed wherein there is at second portion, portion there is a phosphate group. Okay, phosphate 2, 6 bisphosphate. Where it is formed, how it is formed, that we will discuss. Okay, now. So what happens to fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate? Now you know that we have got two phosphate groups, one at the first position, one second one at the second position. Now it is time for cleavage. So what happens? It is now be cleaved, fructose 1,6 bisphosphate will be cleaved into two products. One is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and another one is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So you can see over here that this is our fructose uh, 1, 6, bis phosphate, correct? 1, 6, bis phosphate. All right. So now this is broken down, cleavage. There is a cleavage exactly giving you two products which are three carbon each. Fructose is six carbon, no? So now you have exactly three carbon divided groups here. All right. So each will have phosphate group. The one in the blue shaded uh, is also seen over here and the other one in the red shaded. The red shaded one is dihydroxyacetone, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So because there is an acetone group, acetone group. And this one is glyceraldehyde, glyceraldehyde. Why it is glyceraldehyde? This is the... Uh, what is that? Most common trios, uh, trio aldos, right? So why trios? Because this is one carbon, two carbon, and three carbon. And these both can be interconverted. These both by triose, hexose, isomerase. These both can also be interconverted to form glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which will now enter into the second stage of glycolysis. 
Okay, so let us go back to our main this one. So what happens? Glucose is phosphorylated to glucose six phosphate using a molecule of ATP. By enzyme hexokinase using cofactor magnesium. Hexokinase main function is to trap glucose in the form of glucose six phosphate, and it is a irreversible reaction. Second, glucose six phosphate isomerizes in the presence of phosphohexose isomerase to uh, to the fructose six phosphate. Third reaction, second phosphorylation happens with for, to the fructose six phosphate to form fructose one six bisphosphate by the enzyme phosphofructokinase one, which is also the rate limiting enzyme and is all regulated by fructose two six bisphosphate. The product formed is fructose one six bisphosphate. Once fructose one six bisphosphate is formed, there is cleavage. by the enzyme aldolase again this enzyme is important when we will discuss about hereditary fructose intolerance and fructose essential fructose urea and all so aldolase will break this particular enzyme into glyceraldehyde and dihydroxy glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate as its product so by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase by enzyme triose phosphate isomerase they both are interconvertible but mostly they both form glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so that brings us to the end of the preparatory stage of glycolysis